it's hard not to go to the farmer's market and get excited by what you see. And that's what I did. I didn't even go with a recipe. I just went with an idea of, you know, I think pasta would be great. Taking some cooked vegetables and tossing with pasta at the end. I think the fun thing was also, you know, adding that olive oil. I mean, that's what just really brought it alive. When I think about writing recipes or putting together a cooking class, I always think about what is in season. And that's really kind of what excites me. Also going to the farmer's market. And in my class today, I have Michelle, who's a financial advisor. And do you like to go to the farmer's market? I absolutely love to go to the farmer's do market. I do. What inspires you, like, when you go? The second you step into the farmer's market, just the wafting smells of lavender, the different meat purveyors, just a cornucopia for your eyes. I know, it's so true. When I asked Michelle, do you shop at the farmer's market, and she got really excited, I knew that she had that same feeling about anything fresh and vegetables, and I loved hearing that. So I knew that I had chosen correctly. In the farmer's market, there's so many new ingredients that you're exposed to. It'd be a shame not to try them out. Well, I thought it would be really fun today to do a pasta dish with okay. all of the beans that I got at the farmer's market. These are yellow wax beans. That's what these are right here. Okay. These are haricot vert, also French beans. Okay. And they're just a little bit more toothsome. So they're a little bit more crunchy. But then these, you don't eat these whole because, boy, that would be crunchy, really crunchy. These are fresh cannellini beans. Okay. Do you ever I've, buy them? I've never had cannellini oh, beans. Oh, cool. Great, I love them. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to shell these. All you have to do is just take them out of the pod, discard the pod, and then we're going to cook them. Let's make sure this pot is boiling. Okay. The pasta can cook in the same water as the beans. You don't have to um, do several different pots. So what I'm going to do is just to, this is almost boiling, what I'll do is add the beans. One of the things I don't do is add salt to this pan. It really hardens the um, protein on the outside of the bean. And the shell can stay really hard, mm -hmm. and the inside gets really soft. So instead, I don't add any salt at all, and I season them later with salt. Oh, that makes all right? sense. So now that this is pretty much, it's come up to a boil, we're gonna add those beans. Now those are going to take, it just depends on the bean and the size of the bean, but those will probably take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. All right, let me show you what we're going to do with this. Um, we're gonna take these beans and you can just remove the ends and then we'll cut those at the angle. So okay. here you go. And probably into about one to one and a half inch pieces. So these, here, I'll give you a little pile of these. As I said, these take a little bit longer to cook, but they're really, really delicious. Lots of flavor. And they, these come from mostly from the south of France. These are still cooking. In the meantime, what we can do is we'll chop a shallot. So let me show you how to chop these, okay? okay. What we'll do first of all, you can take your knife and just cut off the top. And you leave the root end intact. Next, what I do is I cut this in half. And I can see that with a shallot, there are two pieces. And I don't really worry about that. I'll just chop those separately. But what I do is I remove that outside skin. While we're just peeling those, what I'm going to do is to drop the, um, or I'm gonna have you do it. Oh, great. You can put the wax beans and the haricot vert right into the boiling water. Just one sec before you do that. One of the things we need now, though, is we do need salt in this water. Okay, why would we need salt for these versus the beans? Because these are very different. This is a, sh a shell bean with lots of protein in it. This is really more of a vegetable, and this will take on the flavor of the salt. It's not gonna do anything to toughen it at all. So I add a good amount of salt to the water. There, and you can see how, yeah, see how it, it just boils? Yeah, boiled like a volcano. Right, so the reason is I add that, so when you add these beans, it will come back to a boil more quickly, plus for flavor. So you can add those, 
Those won't take nearly as long as the shell beans. So next what I do is I take my knife and just exactly the same way that you would cut your onion, I take the knife and I'm cutting towards the root end on the shallot. So I cut in a couple of parallel cuts. You can see I keep my fingers on the top mm -hmm. and it's small so you have to be really careful and without going through the root end I cut towards the root. Okay. And then with the tip of the knife I cut towards the root in a couple of parallel cuts. Turn that shallot and you can either use a small knife or if you want you can grab your chef's knife and you can cut this into a fine dice and the idea is the root end holds it together. And next what we're going to do is to chop some parsley. So we need a few tablespoons of parsley. When you're taking parsley, this is a nice fresh Italian parsley. And what you can do is just to remove the tops mm -hmm. from the parsley and then just place the parsley in a pile right in front of you. Now we're gonna have you do some chopping. Okay, I'll gather it all together so I know it's a big mound like this and I start like this. Mm -hmm. And I kind of pick up the knife so that what I'm doing is flattening the pile just a little bit because it's a little high. Then I come back and chop. All right, give that a shot. Now, just let's check these beans. I just don't want them to be overdone. Let's see, once again, I'm gonna try. You try the yellow, I'll try the green. Okay. Mm. Perfect. Mm. They're absolutely perfect. They're really yummy. Aren't they? Mm -hmm. All right, here you go. Great. You can take those out. So how long was that about? Maybe? I would say with beans, and these take just a touch longer. I would say probably about five to seven minutes. Okay, that's, that's quick. Now I'm gonna turn this down, put the cover on, and we'll save this to cook the pasta. So Michelle, place that parsley in this bowl. Okay. Next is oregano. Take the oregano and then pull in the opposite direction like that. Okay. And we need a few teaspoons of fresh oregano. Oh, I know what we could do. Let's chop this together. We could put, this is the savory and this is really the focus of the dish. This is wonderful. It's just so aromatic. So what we'll do is we can take these And sprit. what is that? This is summer savory. Okay. And it's, there's a winter savory and a summer savory, but this one's much more tender than the winter savory. Control with a knife can't be a bad thing. No, <laughs> it's true. And getting down good knife skills is great. You can add this to the bowl. Scoop up. This pastry scraper is wonderful for that. You don't have to use the blade of your knife. Good. Now what we'll do is to add some olive oil to this pan right here in the front. So you can add a couple tablespoons. Okay. Maybe two or three tablespoons. So you're gonna tell me when to stop. I am. Okay. Perfect, that's, that's okay. excellent, that's great. Now, you could absolutely, if you need to, grab a measuring spoon, but I find, you know, it's just as easy not to do that and you can really figure out what two to three tablespoons. I can, I bet you these are done. Try them. Mm. They're creamy now. Mm. They're really good, mm, aren't that's they? That's made a big difference. Oh, those are so good. Let's add those to this. While that oil is heating, you can take those beans out and okay. add them to the other beans. So put these in here? Yes. Okay. And our oil has heated and you can add the shallots. You can see that that oil's rippling, Michelle. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, a nice hot pan. So what we're doing is we're just cooking those for about five minutes until they soften. It doesn't take very long. Now, in the meantime, what we're gonna do very quickly is a couple cloves of garlic. Just using the back of your knife, what you can do is to turn your garlic so you know it doesn't roll on the counter. And I use the back and very quickly, I wanna show you this because I know you like garlic. And I just mash all the way down the clove of garlic. I'm mashing just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. Then I turn the knife over 
and very quickly I've got a minced clove of garlic. You can stir those. You can see that they're soft and translucent. They're getting Just golden brown. Just starting to take on some color. So we're ready to add that garlic. That now, smells great. Doesn't it? Yeah, I love that. You can take the cover off the pan. This is the pan we added the salt to. Remember, this mm -hmm. is when we cooked the beans in. So there's already salt. You can drop the fusilli right into the boiling water. Now we're gonna cook that pasta until it's al dente. Depending upon the pasta, it'll probably take about probably eight to 10 minutes. This is homemade chicken stock. You can buy chicken stock, but you wanna buy the low sodium. So what I did was I took a few cups and I reduced it down till there's about a cup left. So it's really, really concentrated mm -hmm. in flavor. All we're doing is waiting for the pasta to be done and then we can just toss it all together. All right, let's taste the pasta now. Let's see. You can go by looks, but I also think it's good to taste it. I know it's hot. It's a little <laughs> hot. Mm. That's pretty guys. Mm. It's really nice and al dente, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's perfect. We can just drain this pasta. I put this back into the pan. Mm -hmm. And now I've got that nice hot pan, and that's going to keep the pasta hot. But what I do now is I'm going to add, you can add the shallots. Okay. I'll add the beans. Lots of beans. Then we'll add those wonderful herbs. A good handful. Add the chicken stock. Okay. Pour it right in. Wow, it smells so you good. I know, doesn't it? Now we didn't add any salt, so we'll add some salt to it. And then we'll also add a little bit of black pepper. Now you can take this rubber spatula and you can toss that together. So what I love about this is it's lots of vegetables. Honestly, when you looked at that pasta, which, which was really kind of funny about the pasta, it was more vegetable than it was pasta. But for me, that's how I like to eat. I like a little bit of starch, a lot of vegetables. Mm, let's see how this is. Mm, it's so good. I can really taste those herbs. Mm, I taste the herbs, mm. the oil with the shallots, mm. and of course the bean. Mm. That's great. And really good. All right, look how beautiful that is. Oh, it goes so well with the platter too. I know. You can place it right over here on the counter. I thought this would be really nice with a Gruner Veltliner. Let me try it. Mm. You ready to taste? I can't wait. We've worked hard, we deserve this. I know, of course. Shopping at the farmer's market. Mm. That's really delicious, mm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. Do you think you could use a pinch more salt? I don't think it would hurt. Sometimes you have to just try. Thank you. And see what you think. I mean, the minutest amount. The other thing that would be so good on this, just a drizzle of olive oil. That would be really great. Mm -hmm. You can try that too. Mm -hmm. I'd be open to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you wanna do the olive oil Let's too? Do the olive oil. I wanna try it. She'll be upset I'll when I you. have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know why? Because I love beans with olive oil, so I think this would be really, really nice. Little decadent here. Oops. All right, a little much there. <laughs> oh no, is there ever too much olive oil? Mm. So good. All right, so good. Imagine making a sandwich with the most wonderful rustic bread, putting tomatoes and basil straight from the farmer's market. Now, then you've got to tear this whole thing up, add some cucumbers, some red onions, and a vinaigrette, and making a salad out of it. That's what we're gonna make next. It's called panzanella. It comes from central Italy and it's delicious. It's a bread salad. It's really good. Have you ever made it? I've never had a, a bread salad before. I just associate salad with vegetables. So this oh, will be different. Oh no, it's very different because really it focuses on 
day old bread or a few days old. In this case, it's probably three day old bread. But this in the Mediterranean, they never throw away bread. They always use it for something. So what we do to start is we take the bread and you can cut this, we'll only use half of it, but you can cut this into about one inch slices. Okay, what kind of bread is this? This is a Levin, which Levin. is, Levin is made with rye and whole wheat flour, this one happens to be, and then it's made with grapeseed yeast. And it's really delicious flavor. A nice rustic bread is what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And you can see this is definitely not fresh. But that's great, that's what you want. What I want you to do, Michelle, is to add some water. Now, it's very little. You're gonna just pour probably a total of about one half cup over the bread. And it's almost like you're reviving the bread. Okay. Too much or? Nope, okay. you're doing the right thing. And you can probably even go a little bit more. Oops. Nope, that's fine. Now what you do is you take this and you can just squeeze out the excess <laughs> moisture. So you add it and then you tear it into the bowl. And I like this to be not into tiny pieces. I like it to be probably one half inch to one inch pieces. And then what we'll do now is we're going to add cucumbers to this. Cucumbers give it a nice fresh kind of crunch too. So what we can do is we'll each take half and then what you can do, really this, um, this you were grabbing this knife? Yes, yeah, the this, bread knife. This is a bread knife, okay. exactly. Do you know the other thing it's used for? We're gonna use it in a few minutes. I do not. Tomatoes. It's really perfect for tomatoes because the skins of the tomato are a little bit um, tough. So depending upon the tomato, of course. What we wanna do is just to peel, and you know, I'm sure, how to peel a cucumber. That I do know how to do. <laughs> now what we do next is you can cut the cucumber in half. Of course, you wanna remove the ends of the cucumber. And with a small spoon, you're going to remove the seeds. Okay. So I just use that and kind of run it along the cucumber. Great. Now we wanna cut these. Again, I will cut them the long way. And I like panzanella when the pieces are a little bit larger. I don't like it when the pieces are really small. So I would say probably about one half inch chunks. Then you can just throw those into the bowl with that bread. Okay, next, tomatoes. Tomatoes are really wonderful. They give a lot of juiciness and also flavor. And we've got some yellow tomatoes and some red. I was thinking maybe, I like to use about five tomatoes. So maybe we'll use three of the red and two yellow. How's that sound? That sounds like a good, good proportion there. I think it'll be great. Now, you grab your serrated knife this time. But first of all, wait a second. What we do need is to remove the core on those tomatoes. So what you can do is take a small knife, first of all, and just to cut all the way around the core. Okay. So next what you could do is just to cut this tomato into slices. And I like to have the pieces of tomato about the same size as the cucumbers. Okay. So the vegetables should be about the same size. And then cut it across into three pieces. You might not want to cut all of those. Do a few at a time. Okay. So I did thirds and then cut across. So it's a nice square chunk. You know, I think we had two tomatoes that were larger okay. of the yellow tomatoes, so I think we're probably fine with four tomatoes. And next is a red onion. I think you'll find it's a little more of a challenge, a little bit. <laughs> Here you go. Yes, excellent, good. So yes, that's the idea. You want all those vegetables to be about the same size. Okay, perfect. Michelle really did get better and better with her knife skills. She really did improve. It was kind of amazing to see that in just one class. And if sometimes you don't get those ends, you can just make sure that you break them up. Good. All right, so now you can add that to the salad. All right. We've got red, yellow, purple. I know, aren't the colors gorgeous? They're it's really rainbow. beautiful. Now this is optional. Some people like to have garlic in a bread salad, some don't, but I know that you like garlic. And I love too. garlic. So I think just a little bit is nice. Okay. You're using that blunt side of the knife to, all the way down to really mash your garlic. Good job. Okay. You can place that in the bowl. Good. Oops. 
Now, I would add a couple tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Okay. And traditionally, that is what's used, not balsamic. Balsamic's a little sweet. So I would say two to three tablespoons. We can always add more, remember. And then some nice, fruity, extra virgin olive oil. What we want to do is about double the amount of olive oil to vinegar. Okay. Good. We can always taste this and see how it is. Now the bread is very neutral and you can see that here you've got tons of vegetables. Mm -hmm. If you add a pinch of salt like this, it's not going to do a lot. You really need to add some salt to this to really bring up the flavor. And I'm not saying over season it, but you really do want some salt. So go ahead and add some. It's probably about a teaspoon. Good. And we can always taste and see how that is. And then a little bit of fresh crack, cracked black pepper. Good. And then you can whisk this together. Is this a classic vinaigrette then, or? It is pretty much. I mean, this one is a very standard one. Now really, the best way to taste this, what do you think? Uh, with bread. Or with some of the vegetables or something like that to really see how that tastes. So we've got some bread at the bottom. Let's try it with the bread and maybe a tomato. Just dip that in and taste that and see how it is. Mmm, that's really good. Like it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so next you get the fun part. Pour it over and All then right. we'll stir that together. Doesn't that look That looks great. great. What you're going to do, you don't want to mash the bread too much, so I just bring the bread up to the top like this, and so I'm really just mixing it very carefully. We have one more thing. I got a little carried away today with all the herbs in the market. I thought they were so beautiful. So I thought what we'd do is take a little bit of basil and add it. Not a little, we're gonna add a good amount. But you can pick some nice big leaves and you wanna do this at the last minute. You don't wanna do this too early because that will wilt. Take your basil and just tear the leaves like this. It doesn't take much time, but you wanna tear it into small pieces, about that size. Okay. That's great. Well, would you like a nice plate of panzanella? I would love some. This is the best part. I know, <laughs> the tasting. isn't it? You can see why it's really important to use really good quality bread. Mm -hmm. It's really important because you really taste it. It's really that rustic, you know, flavor of the bread and mm, it's delicious. And it really holds together in the salad. Mm -hmm. You need that. It's a good vessel for mm. the olive oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice and crunchy. And the vinaigrette. Mm. I can see why you wanted them in, in large chunks too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, they're just easier really to nice. eat. I just found some basil. You are a girl. great, great student. It was really oh, very fun much. to cook with you. And I really love today. Shopping at the farmer's market and then cooking with you has been a really fun day. I had a great time, Joanne. Thank you.